Hey, welcome back everyone to your C programming tutorial series. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and in this video we're going to talk about data types. Now before we start talking about the types of data, let's first talk about what data is. Well, the best way to discuss data is to imagine that we have a variable that holds some data. So let's say we have a variable called tacos, and it stores the value 5. The 5 is a piece of data. By the way, an individual data is called a datum. <laughs> but I personally think that word sounds dumb, so I'm not gonna use it. Five is an example of data. Now the data type tells the computer how to interpret this data. How does the computer interpret this data right here? And it seems kind of odd, like doesn't the computer just know? Well, actually not. For example, when we're working with integer division versus double division. 5 divided by 2 equals 2. 5.0 divided by 2 equals 2.5. You can see that we get two completely different results. These are not equal. And the reason they are different is because the data we are working with has different data types in each of these situations. The data types of each of these pieces of data are as so. The 2 is an integer. The 5 is an integer. The 2 is also an integer, but the 5.0 is a double. So far you can see that there are differences even in the numeric data types. So these are part of the numeric data types. The other one you should know is called float. But starting off knowing int and double is very helpful. The data type of the data changes the results. So you can see that data types are very, very important when it comes to programming. Super important. Our human brains like to group things. So to help us out, data types are often classified. And one of these classifications is called primitive data types. I don't really like this word either, but that's a discussion for another day. The primitive data types are considered to be the smallest data types. And when I say smallest, I don't mean like size. What I mean is that they can't be broken up into pieces. You could say that they are indivisible or what some people would say, atomic. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, consider primitive data types as the building blocks. These are like the Legos that we can combine and piece together to make more complex data types. I just used a word that you should know. <laughs> the other type of data type is complex. Now, a perfect example of a complex data type is a struct, and we can define our own structs. We are not going to get into the details of how to make structs right now because it's way down the road. <laughs> but it is important to know that they exist. A struct is essentially using these primitive data types to make something more complex. For example, we could make a struct for dates. So then we can make a variable like this. You can see that the variable today is of type date. Or we could have something like this. You can see that the variable lol is of data type coordinates. These are not primitive. They are complex. We used the building blocks to create them ourselves. We can even combine multiple structs to make even bigger structures. <laughs> we just keep building and building and building until we have very complex data types or what some people would say, data structures. An example of a more complex data structure would be a linked list. A linked list you can think of as a chain of things where these can be whatever you want them to be. So for example, we could make a linked list of coordinates. So each one of these would have an XY. And this could be some kind of route that you have to take to get somewhere. You can see that they're all connected. And you can see it just gets more complex and more complex. For now, I don't really want you to worry about the complex data types. What's important is that you get down the primitive data types. There's a lot of data types that are built into C and structs are a good example of something that's built into C, whereas the linked list you kind of have to build yourself. But I want you to focus on the stuff that is already included in C and don't worry about this stuff for right now. Once you got down the numeric data types, the arrays, and even some structs, then you can start building some more complex things like linked lists, which is the hardest word in the world to say. Lists. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I will see you in the next one. Peace. Also be sure to subscribe and don't forget to download the notes if you think that would be helpful for you. All I ask is for your email. You know.
I'm not gonna like spam you that often. 